The Whistler. And now, The Whistler's strange story. Murder in Paradise. High in the Sierras, the lone hawk circled over Mirror Lake, its beady eyes fixed on a white patch moving slowly through the blue waters below. From the narrow road that ran along the lake's edge, another pair of eyes followed the patch of white, watched the girl emerge from the water and remove the white bathing cap, saw the mass of red hair fall on tan shoulders, now glistening in the bright sunlight. The eyes belonged to Danny Williams, who stood there looking at the girl in the yellow bathing suit. Then as she sat down at the edge of the long wooden pier, he shifted the heavy suitcase from one hand to the other and started through the trees toward her. As he emerged at the edge of the lake, he walked into the range of another pair of eyes looking through field glasses, trained on the scene from a point a quarter of a mile away. Hello. I'm looking for Paradise Inn. You know where it is? Uh-huh. You a salesman? Do I look like one? Oh, in a way. Are you? In a way. I don't think they'll be interested in buying any brushes. Thanks for the tip, and I'm still looking for the inn. You got a cigarette? Sure. I'm smoking it. How'd you ever get to be so charming? Look, Red, they told me in the village the inn was a mile up the road. So you know. Why well, come to the lake to ask me? It was a bathing suit. On the road, I couldn't believe it. Like it? I've seen more material in a pen wiper. <laughs> the inn's over there. Take the side road. Thanks. See it? Nothing wrong with my eyes. From the way you've been staring at me, I thought you might have strained them. A quarter of an hour later, you arrive at the roadhouse. A low white frame building sitting back silently in the shadows of the giant redwood. This is it, isn't it, Danny? Paradise Inn, where you're going to spend the next three months pounding the piano for Johnny Hedges. Your first job, Danny, since the prison gates closed behind you. Gave you back your freedom. And you've made up your mind that it will never happen again. You're going to stay out of trouble. That's all you can think about as you cross the parking area, mount the wooden stairs, and walk along the veranda. There's a musty odor in the air. You set your suitcase down by the front door. The entrance hall is empty, silent except for the buzz of flies against the sun-drenched window. You make your way across the deserted dining room, past the battered upright piano and push open the swinging doors at the far end of the room. The short, gray-haired man at the sink turns, peers at you over his glasses, and then begins to wipe his hands on the soiled apron. Hi, young fella. Hi. Where'll I find the boss? Oh, he'll be around. You, uh, must be the new piano player. That's right, Danny Williams. Williams. Danny Williams. You never heard of me before. I'm Gus Peters. I do the cooking. Uh, sit down, sit down. Sir. Thanks. He didn't meet you at the bus stop, huh? Who's he? Mr. Hedges. Hedges? No. Hmm. Uh, how about a cold beer? You look like you could use one. Got any milk? Milk? Say, you sure you're the piano player? I said I was. Ulcers? No ulcers. The cows need publicity. Yeah, okay. If that's what you want. Why didn't somebody meet me at the bus stop? It's a long hike out in this heat. Well, I can't drive for one thing. Never could learn how. Slade is still sleeping, I guess. He wouldn't go after you anyway. And the boss had other things to do. Mm. Must have outside interests. Ain't business so much that keeps Mr. Hedges busy. It's keeping up with his wife that's got him going. His wife? Yep. Don't let her out of his sight much. Hey, you want a sandwich or something? No, not that. He doesn't trust you. Real jealous, you know. Thinks every man he talks to is going to take her away from him. How about a piece of pie? No, no, this will do. Yeah. We sure have been having a fast turnover of piano players around here. They, uh, 
couldn't stay away from her. It's the, uh, the perfume, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. <clears throat> been only two men around here who ain't ever been bothered by Mrs. Hedges. Me and Andy Slade. You'll meet him. He works here in the back. How does he manage to resist? Ain't never been able to figure it out. He's strictly business and a natural cold fish. Uh, you leave your stuff on the veranda, Danny? Yeah. I'll take it up. Your room's in the attic next to mine. Don't bother. No bother. Just going upstairs in a few minutes anyway. Take a little snooze. Any objection if I try the piano on for size? No. Go ahead. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I guess. Uh, Danny. Yeah? Stay away from her, son. Just stand to your piano and you'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Hello. So this is what you sell. Yep. Strictly music. You, uh, you play very well. Much better than the others. Thanks. I knew you would. I could tell by your hands. They're different. I bet you were a child prodigy. I was born a poor but honest peasant in the Bronx. My mother scrubbed floors so I could have piano lessons. She thought I'd become a concert pianist. It didn't work out. Don't cry. I just made that up. Who kicked you while you were down, music man? Luck, Red. The story of Danny Williams is sort of dull. You wouldn't be interested. Now, why don't you go back to the lake? You're very rude. Business is business, Mrs. Hedges. Oh. Oh. You know who I am? Yeah, the boss's wife. Period. What does that mean? It means I need the job, and I don't like wives that are on the prowl. <laughs> sort of fast with your mitts, aren't you, baby? Not Johnny Hedges, if that's what you're worried about. Relax, man. The name is Slade. Andy Slade. I got the gambling concession out back. Welcome to paradise. It's an unusual job, isn't it, Danny? One of the strangest you've ever had. You never bargained for this sort of thing when you first accepted it. Johnny Hedges Roadhouse at Mirror Lake didn't seem to suggest the danger and intrigue that suddenly presents themselves. Lucille and the way you met her on the boat dock. The warning from Gus. And now the coldly calculating gambler, Andy Slade, stands at your side with the strangest greeting you've ever received. Like I said, Williams, you're off to a great start. But here only and now, and the boss's wife slaps your face. Uh, political discussion, wasn't it? Yeah, you might call it that. Now, some dames get mad if you don't whistle at them. Anything else on your mind? No, nothing. Except the boss wants to see you. We've been up there in the office listening to you. He thinks you're good. And you don't? Well, I keep telling him he'd be better off with a jukebox. Nobody ever heard of a jukebox making a play for a dame. You, uh, know what I mean? I know what you mean. Just let me give you a tip. Save it. That's all I've been getting ever since I come here. Okay, okay. It's your funeral. But, uh, Hedges is getting a little sick and tired of hearing the wolf call. You and said I just he thought... wanted to see me. Yeah. Up the stairs there on your right. Thanks. Oh, uh, William. Yeah? It's nice to have you with us. I think you'll get to like it here. That is, if you stay long enough. Come in, William. Come in. 
Your gambling concession said you wanted words. That's right. I just want to iron out a few things before you start. Now, you're an ex-con on parole. That's been ironed out the past three years to care of it. I'm here to play the piano, and that's all. Yeah. Yeah, that's all you're here for. Just remember that. Some of the others didn't. So I love music. Well, I'm glad to hear it, William. I'm glad to hear it. It'll save us both a lot of headaches. All right. Now, you'll play in the dining room from 8 till closing time. You take the breaks to suit yourself. Won't be a lot of people in the dining room. Sometimes there may not be any at all. I'm not fussy. And another thing you might as well know from the start. I don't make my money from the dining room. Not much on the bar either. I didn't think you did. I got a place fixed up in the back. Dice table, roulette wheel. Andy Slade runs that end of it. It's not going to affect you one way or the other. Sure. Well, that all? Yeah. Yeah, you, you met everyone, have you? Yeah, Slade and Gus the Cook. And my wife. You were talking to her down there on the pier a couple hours ago. Yeah. No one picked me up at the bus stop, so I had to walk. I was asking directions. Uh-huh. All right, Williams, just remember what I said. You stick to your piano play and we're going to get along fine. If you get bored, let me know. I'll buy you a book. That night, you play for a half a dozen couples in the dining room. And more than once during the evening, your thoughts turn to Lucille. She means trouble, doesn't she, Danny? And you don't intend to have any. You're going to stay clear of her. You're going to play it safe with Johnny Hedge as her husband. You have no intention of winding up in the lake with a bullet in your head or back in a prison cell. In the nights that follow, you become accustomed to the habits of the Paradise customers. Learn when to be on hand, when you can slip away for a quiet smoke or a chat with Gus. And then one night in the middle of the second week, you go out on the veranda and light up a cigarette. Hello, Danny. Oh, hello. You've done a good job these past ten days. Thanks. Of staying away from me, I mean. I catch on quick. You don't know what it is to feel out of place. Go for drives all by yourself. And with walks along the beach. You do that? Almost every night after the customers leave. The cove on the North Shore. Why? Oh, I don't know. Get away, I guess. From your husband? From myself, maybe. I don't know, Danny. I'm... Just confused sometimes. Yeah, I'd say so, too. Excuse me, William. I gotta go confuse some customers. You leave her, Danny. Go back to your keyboard and the cocktail concerto. But somehow, through the evening, the haze of music, the laughter in the smoke-filled room, there's something that haunts you. Keeps drifting back like broken parts of an old refrain. Almost every night, after the customers leave. It stays with you, Danny, that night, and into the next until after you finish playing. Unable to fight down the urge, you you find yourself slipping away, taking a rowboat and crossing the lower tip of the lake in the half-darkness. At the cove, you look around and there's no sign of her. You call yourself a fool and wonder why you came out here when you promised yourself to stay out of trouble. You're about to. You're about to turn back when... Oh, oh, yeah. We can step right out here. Yeah. I'll pull the boat up, boys. That's better. I really don't know why I came. I'm glad you did, Danny. Glad to have somebody talk to you. But I don't want to get you into trouble. Any harm in just talking? He wouldn't think we were just talking. Forget about it for a while, Lucy. Yes, Sounds nice the way you say it. Does it? You know, Danny, you're not as hard as you pretend. No? If you were, you wouldn't have rode way out here to meet me. Danny. Yeah? Don't do it again. you lose your job. No, it's a job. And with a piano needs time. But he can cause you trouble. Danny, you've got to ignore me. Act as if I didn't exist. If it's any other way, you won't last here. Not at all. Is that why Slade lasted? Slade and I hated each other from the first. 
Johnny knows that. That's why he gives Slade anything he wants. Nice guy, your husband. Charming as a meat ass. Please, Danny, I want you to understand because... Because I'm going to avoid you. You sound like a magazine ad. Oh, Danny. Danny, why did you come here? Why? I don't know, I don't know. Boy Scout instinct, maybe. But there's nothing we can do. I can't lead him. He'd follow me, bring me back. What if he didn't want to come back? You don't know him. He'd kill me, Danny, I know. Believe me, I know. Maybe. Maybe not. Anyway, Lucille, give me a little time to think about it. You're in a tough spot. Maybe I can help you. I got a merit badge once for pathfinding. When you leave her, Danny, and start the long row back across the lake, you remember a promise. One that you made to yourself about staying out of trouble. And you ask yourself if this is the way. When you arrive at the boat dock, you're convinced that it must end right here. And then going up the path toward the roadhouse, you pass a small cottage in back of the inn. And suddenly you're aware of voices arguing, and you stop to listen. You drove around the lake. You met some guy. Oh, don't leave. I just... Easy, son. Where are you going? Tess. Uh -huh, I've been waiting to warn you. Catch his nose, she met somebody. Good thing you didn't ride back with her in the car. Come on, Danny. Let's go back to the inn. Look, I'll say... Come on, Danny. Yeah. Yeah, I guess for a minute I had the crazy idea I should be butting in. You'd better stay clear of that setup, Danny. He's his wife. Not yours, you know. I just play the piano here, yeah, sure. That's what you get paid for. Okay, okay. Just forget everything else, son. Forget everything. Except that you're the guy who wants to stay out of trouble. <laughs> If old Gus expected the passage of hours to make any difference, he was wrong, wasn't he, Danny? Even without seeing Lucille all that next day, you can't get her off your mind. The struggle within you goes on, and the following night as your hands move across the keyboard when you entertain the late dinner crowd... Shortly after one in the morning, she comes in, moves quickly across the room, and as she goes past you at the piano, there's a quickly whispered message. I've got to see you, Danny, out back. Come as quickly as you can. You continue playing as if nothing happened. You've made up your mind, haven't you, Danny? You know it was a mistake meeting her at the cove, and you're not going to repeat that mistake, are you? I had to see. Sure. Oh, Danny, I can't stand it any longer. Danny, someone's coming. Wow. Hello. Easy. I thought I told you to stick to your piano playing music, man. Leave us alone, Lucille. Go back inside. Oh, Danny, I'm afraid. Go on. Yeah, beat it, Lucille. Because right now I'm going to go to work on him. <laughs> As Johnny Hedges comes out of the darkness after you, there's a flash of a knife blade. You lunge for it. It's like a nightmare, isn't it, Danny? All out of focus, unreal. A strange, struggling sensation. There's the fleeting memory of the knife falling on the path, and then movement over which you have no control. Blows falling, exchanging, a dull thud, and then... Danny. Danny, you all right? I hit him, Gus. He came at me, and I hit him. With this... I know... Drop it, Danny. Drop it. Come on, son. You've got to get out of here. No, wait. He's still alive, Danny. You've got to get away before No, he... it was self-defense. I can tell him that. They won't believe you. You're an ex con Doesn't make any difference. I can't leave him like this, no matter what happens to me. I'm going to get him to a hospital. Come on, help me get him to his car. He's still alive. And I've got to try to keep him that way. <laughs> Somehow you manage to get him into his car. And through it all, you know that Gus is right. The trouble you wanted to escape, you're now inviting, asking for. But as you back the car onto the road with hedges in the seat beside you, all you can think of is saving him, 
And then suddenly you're aware of Lucille at the window of the car. Danny. Danny, what are you doing? I've got to get him to a hospital. He'll die no, if I don't. Oh, Danny, they'll arrest you. They'll say you killed him. It was self-defense. They won't believe you. I can't let you do it. Please, Danny, if you love me, you'll leave him here and get away. You do love me, don't you, Danny? I'm taking him to the hospital, Lucille. Danny! Danny, no! She leaps back as the car moves forward. You catch a fleeting glimpse of her face, white, drawn, concerned, and then it's gone, and you're aware of hedges beside you, breathing softly but steadily. And as your foot presses down on the accelerator, you realize that your own strength is fading fast. The struggle, Danny, the pounding you took, it's telling now as you fight to hold the car on the road. Moments later... A flash of light caught in the rearview mirror. It blurs your vision. In the haze, the fog that envelops your brain, you think you hear Lucille's voice. Her face seems to float close to you out of the darkness. Daddy! Daddy, listen to me! Stop the car! No, no, Lucille. Daddy, the curb! Look out! going to be all right. I'd better call the lieutenant. You sit there with me. Lieutenant. Police. Take it easy, son. Gus. Gus, where am I? The hospital, Danny. You've been unconscious for over 12 hours. Hedges. Look. What about Hedges? Hedges is dead. Trouble, Danny. You were headed for it the day you walked up the road to Paradise Inn. No matter how hard you struggled and tried to avoid it, it was there all around you, closing in. Because you couldn't stay with your music and leave Lucille alone. She couldn't help it either, could she, Danny? You're sure of that. But it doesn't matter now. Because instead of helping her, you've ruined everything. Her husband is dead and you'll be blamed, won't you, Danny? They'll never believe it was self-defense, not with your past record. You lie back on the white hospital bed. Listen, Daddy. The doc will be bringing the police back in a minute. Yeah, yeah, I know. Hedges. Well, this is it. I have to tell him, Gus. You don't have to tell him anything. You didn't kill him. You only knocked him out, Danny. You broke his neck in that car crash. You were crowded off the road, son. What? Lucille Hedges. She was trying to stop you. Lucille. Is she all right? No. She was killed, too. Oh. oh it was my fault, because she was in love with no, me. No, she I... wasn't. You played it straight. She didn't. She framed you, Danny. Set that meeting there behind the roadhouse with you, knowing her husband would find you together. What? She wanted you to kill him. Didn't care what happened to you. I don't believe it. Son, that's why she didn't want you to make it to the hospital. She wanted him dead. But Gus, I... It was so she could be free for the guy who was driving the car after you last night. He was killed with her. Oh. The one guy nobody figured. Slade. Andy Slade. Uh Uh-huh. The only guy she was ever crazy about. The Whistler has been a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.